My name's Ian Pearce. My name's Prue Pearce. We operate an orchard called Stonely, which is about eight kilometres north of Orange in New South Wales. Here we grow apples, about five different varieties of apples, uh, about four or five different varieties of cherries as well. So it's fresh fruit production. We've been here just over 20 years and this industry is forever evolving with um, different varieties and trying to keep up with new ways of doing things and to try and make it more efficient as possible because we are very labour in intensive. The climate, it is noticeably getting warmer. I, that's definitely a factor in what we're doing and I think our rainfall is getting less predictable so that brings with it issues that you have to uh, try and manage. We're, we're reliant here on um, rain fed dams. We've got one irrigation bore which is out of a basalt aquifer so they're not the most reliable and we have a creek system about a kilometre away that we have a licence to pump from. But all those are highly variable. We don't have a big dam that supplies us water. So that dry summer, 2019-20, risk was getting greater and greater because rainfall wasn't there and there was no additional ability to, to source any irrigation water for us. It, there seems to be a trend where we're not getting really good, reliable spring rainfall. And then following on through the season, we, we tend to be getting more intense and, and less predictable rainfall. In the summer of 2019, that was the latter period of a really, really bad dry period. Quite extended and quite severe. Yeah, the creek was uh, just about dry. And I was at the point of actually looking and thinking that uh, we just have to save the trees. You know, that, it was pretty bad. After the 2019-20 drought was the subsequent season. In the spring, we had no bees. Like, we rely here on native bees. We don't introduce bees in hives. But that year, I couldn't believe it. That bee population was significantly reduced due to that lack of food source during that drought period, I think. You never know when it's going to rain. You never know, you know, whether it's going to be a really windy day and that's when your sort of pollination of your bees and if it's really windy, is your fruit going to pollinate? Can you get critical sprays on at the right time? You know, if you have a great season, you get a great crop, you get fantastic prices. If everything's going well and your bank balance is looking well and the bank's happy, you know, everything's rosy. But when you get a couple of hailstorms and then you get rain at the wrong time, this time last year, we'd, we'd finished picking three weeks ago. But the season has been so long and so late because it's actually been not much sun at times, it's been colder and things haven't ripened as much. A noticeable increase in fruit bats in the, in the area and they did significant damage to crops. We had to put in some extra netting so they couldn't get in. So we have the nets over the top for the hail, but we also had to put in side nets to stop them becoming uh, consumers of our apples. I've grown up with risk, um, but you want to manage it as best you can. So how did it feel that year to realise we we're going to run out of water? It was bad, but I also felt there was an opportunity there to, to do something about it. So that's what we did. So as a part of DPI project, we've installed a number of sensors in within the orchard canopy. Through my phone, I can access the homepage and off that we can get information on tank water levels, on all the information from the weather station and information from different sensors in the orchard. I can walk up here now and I can see the tree, I can see what's happening and I can see what the data is saying at the same time. We're modifying how we irrigate. We're irrigating less now with under tree sprinklers and more with drip irrigation. By moving from a system of one fine micro sprinkler per tree to two lines of drip per tree, we've actually halved our water use. So we're watering more regularly, but a lot less amount. Also have a situation where you're in hot and dry periods, our soil temperatures fluctuate a lot more. We look to move towards using mulches and things like that under the trees to try and reduce that temperature fluctuation and also conserve moisture. We've also put in, in recent years, hail netting and we did that with a view of protecting our crops against hail, but there's been a, a bunch of other benefits of doing that, including less evaporation, it's more humid under the netting system, so our water use efficiency is better, less sunburn, 
and protect them from like invasive species like bats and, and birds that you don't particularly want getting and eating your fruit. We've got a lot going our way and we've just got to work out how we can have a sustainable and viable business going into the future in agriculture because it is certainly very challenging at the moment doing what we're doing and we do have our minds open to change.